Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be starting off by doing my nails using my non-dominant hand. So if you guys are aware, I am right-handed. So all this video, including the nail art, is gonna be done with my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand. So I'm actually starting off by doing a very small fill on my nails. I did recently do my birthday nails, but I didn't do any design on my right hand. So I figured I would go ahead and just do a tiny little fill so that the nails do not look any type of crusty once I go in with my nail art. I do struggle a little bit to do my cuticle area when I am applying my acrylic, so I will get a little bit of spillage and I do get a little bit of lifting because of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. I now am going in with my diamond bit, which is gonna help remove any excess dead skin. You guys probably saw that I did go ahead and push back my cuticles with a cuticle pusher simply because I do have very little to no growth. So I wanna make sure that I really expose that area and get in there so I'm able to do an actual fill. Otherwise, I wouldn't have much area to fill. Then I'm gonna be going in with my cuticle ball bit and I'm just gonna be carefully buffing off the dead skin from my cuticle area. And as always, remember to use very light pressure on your handpiece. I do have my EFAO at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. Now we're gonna be adding some primer. For today's video, I'm using the Kiara Sky Acrylic Primer. This has become my go-to from recent events that have happened with my clients. So I'm just gonna be adding a very, very small amount, trying not to get it in my cuticles, and also not really overlapping it onto the acrylic as much because it is not necessary. Now going immediately in with my acrylic application. For today's video, I'm using the size 12 acrylic brush from Not Polish. Along with that, I'm using the monomer from Kiara Sky. And then for this beautiful nude color that I have been using a lot lately, it is a custom mix between, originally between two colors, which was Nude Panther and Silk Scarf, both from Not Polish. And then I recently added a little bit of First Nude from Not Polish as well, just so that it matches a little bit more with my skin tone as it was a little bit on the darker side to match my practice hand in the shade V4. So I'm gonna go in and very, very quickly apply that near the cuticle area. We're gonna be right away pulling that product downwards. It is a little bit hard to not flood my cuticles when I'm working with my non-dominant hand because of the way that I have to hold my right hand in order to apply it. So it gets a little tricky, but I try to work very, very quickly to try to avoid any spillage. I typically pick up my bead with my right hand because that is my dominant hand and it just makes it a little bit easier. So if you're struggling to apply acrylic using your non-dominant hand on yourself, just make it a little bit easier on yourself and pick it up with your dominant hand. That way you will get the perfect bead and consistency and then switch the brush over to your left hand and apply it with that. And I'm going in with my hand file from Tammy Taylor. This is her peel and stick file. And I'm just gonna quickly hand file the rest of my nail. I did already previously file them, so pretty much the only area that I have to focus on is the area that I infilled. I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe to prep my nails for our nail art. And for today's video, I'm actually gonna be top coating the base of my nails so that the nail art goes on there a little bit smoother since I am gonna be doing it with my non-dominant hand. 
I feel like why not? I rarely ever do this because I feel like it's an extra step, but for the purpose of making my life a little bit easier because I struggle a lot to do nail art with my left hand, I figured I would give it a go. So we're actually using the glow in the dark top coat from Profiles Backstage. They recently sent this to me and I was super excited that I couldn't wait to use it. It's gonna be perfect for Halloween, so definitely recommend this one. Now it does state on the bottle that it is tack free. However, I do feel like there is a little bit of slight stickiness to it. It does have a tacky layer that you have to wipe off but it does have a little bit of like tacky feel to it if that makes sense so I went ahead and put it in the light for a full 60 seconds and that's how it came out so either try adding it in the light for a little bit longer or just go in with another top coat to prevent that so I'm going in with teal frosting gel paint from profiles backstage and then I'm adding the blue frosting gel paint from profiles backstage as well and we're going to be mixing those to make like a really deep teal color. It comes off a little bit more blue on camera but it's a little bit more on the teal side in person. And then I'm going to be adding all my colors to my little palette here. We're going in with the pumpkin paint liner from profiles backstage it's from their fall collection and then just their basic white liner and then i'm also adding the dark blue which is just their blue color from their frosting gel paints also to deepen up the vibe a little bit now for today's video we're going to be doing some mexico inspired nail art if you guys have been following me for a while now every time i hit september i try to do mexico inspired nails because it is mexico independence month so for all my latinos out there that celebrate as well i'm gonna be doing some mexico inspired nail art from the talavera pottery so if you guys are not aware of what that is i'm sure you guys have seen it I actually just now put a word to it as I did my research, but I did not know it actually had a name. And if you guys have ever seen really beautiful pottery, plates, um, tiles, it pretty much is lots of flowers, lots of curvy lines, patterns, definitely mostly comes in very bright and colorful colors. I feel for the fall time decided to do my own version of it but with fall inspired colors so that's why you're going to be seeing the pumpkin color the dark teal and then the dark blue as well i figured that would be a really cute color combo and more than likely you guys have seen this type of pattern before so we're going to get right into the nail art using my favorite nail art brush which is from a cart you can find it in my amazon storefront it is amazing and it is my go-to nail art brush so we're going to be doing a very simple design on the thumb i honestly was quite proud of myself because i was able to actually do this design without having to redo it a lot of the time i have to erase start over erase and start over but this i did it in one go which i, I was very very proud of myself and that i was able to keep my hand pretty sturdy so we're just going to be doing all the colors combined into this nail with different type of patterns. You see that I did like kind of the flower petal design up at the top, also at the bottom near the tip. And then I'm going to be adding dots as well. That is a staple when it comes to the Talavera pottery patterns. And then lots of like curvy outlines around the designs as well. So we're keeping it basic for this one and then we're going to be trying to get a little bit more intricate as the nails go on. And as always, remember to cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. I feel like it is really important. Don't think that I do not cure in between. I just accidentally delete some of that footage and I figure you guys kind of get the point. So if you're using one color, go ahead and try to do all of that in that same color and then cure in the light. And then if you're going to be doing any type of design that's overlapping another, try to cure that before you go in with your second layer. It's kind of common sense. It, once you get into doing nail art, you kind of understand where you have to cure and when you have to cure. So always remember, I try to put it in there for at least 60 seconds so that all of it cures, especially when you're adding thick layers like I am with these little type of petals. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there for a full 60 seconds before I go in with the next design. So we're going to be starting off on the index finger with a small dot in the pumpkin color. And then I'm doing four long petals in the teal color that I mixed. And then we're going to be going directly in between those with a white one. 
And then in between all the other petals, we're gonna be doing the dark blue just to kind of add a little bit of dimension, fill up that nail very easily and nicely. And then again, remember to cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. And this is probably the most commonly asked question on how I clean my nail art brushes in between doing nail art. I honestly have mentioned it quite a few times, but I always forget to show it. I think I've showed it a few times in one of my other videos, but I pretty much just get my paper towel that I have on my desk and I squeeze it in between two layers of that paper towel and I just pull my bristles through that with no product. I don't add anything to it. I feel like that's what keeps the integrity of my bristles for a very long time. So I do not use any type of product. There's gonna be l little to no product left on those bristles so that when you dip it into your next color, you shouldn't have any of the color go onto the lighter color. You can see that I'm alternating from dark to white and I don't have any issues with it. So again, I just simply squeeze in between a paper towel and pull it through. And then I go in and pick up my next color and so on and so forth. So I decided to add some more of that pumpkin color on the tip and then up top near the cuticle area just to kind of divide all the blue that I'm using. So I'm not going to be showing like if I'm doing the exact same design at the top, at the bottom or on the right and the left. I'm not going to be showing both of those because it just gets super, super repetitive, but you guys kind of get the gist of it. And then on the middle finger, I decided to go a little bit more all out. So we're gonna be doing a tiny flower. It basically consists of heart petals. So you can see me just connecting two little petals together to create a tiny little heart with the pumpkin color as the center of it. And then we're gonna be going with the dark blue and adding some more details around those petals to create more of the type of vibe that you get from the Talavera pottery. It is very, very hard for me to do more intricate designs with my non-dominant hand. So that's why this design so far has been going so good. I did struggle a little bit on this area, but then I made it work. I don't know how, but I think I was just holding my breath very, very well. So we're gonna be doing a tiny little dot and then three little lines, and then we're gonna be doing a bigger petal outlining that little design. And of course, you'll see me do all of this as I am explaining it. And then again, remember, cure in the light whenever you feel it is necessary. Now that pretty much consists of two lines that are curving in to meet at the tip in the middle. So we're gonna be pointing that up as well. So it's pretty much just a curved line, two curved lines going in and meeting each other into a point. And then we're going to be repeating that on the other two as well. I debated ending it right here, but I figured I would go ahead and add a little bit more details before I go in with my checkered design. So we're gonna be adding in some white dots. I'm trying to kind of even out all of the colors throughout the nail art design. So I'm gonna be doing white dots around those petals, and then I'm actually gonna be doing more petals in white, alternating with the teal color as well. And that's where my little flower design is going to be ending at the top. And then I'm gonna be adding more white at the tip. We're gonna be doing that same curved design that kind of separates everything with the color pumpkin. I'm gonna be adding that. It's pretty much just two curved lines as well. That's gonna give me a starting point of where I want my grid design to go. And then at the tip, we're gonna be adding some more petals. These ones, I made them pretty big. And we're just gonna be going in with one big one in the center and then two smaller ones on the sides, slightly curving outwards. And then we're gonna be adding that same pumpkin color with the same curved design to separate it. 
now that I have my guide as to where I want my lines to go, I'm just going to go for it. This was definitely freaking hard. I had literally held my breath the entire time. So if you guys have ever wondered, just hold your breath. <laughs> I'm going in with a blue color, very, very minimal amount of paint on my brush. This is going to help get those very, very thin lines. The more product you have on your brush, the thicker it's going to be. So if you want them thinner, you use a lot less. And I'm probably catching my breath right there because I literally am holding it every time I start doing a line. And I'm going to be doing them slightly diagonal as you guys can see. And then we're going to be crisscrossing them with another set of lines the opposite way. I did cure in between those sets of lines. So I'm curing right after I'm done with this. And then we're going to be going in with the opposite diagonal line to make those tiny little squares. Again, very little amount of product on your brush is going to be key to get super thin lines. And then hold your breath, hold it hold it <laughs> just don't pass out i laugh at myself every time because even when i'm trying not to hold my breath it's just kind of inevitable you end up doing it without thinking about it but i did try to breathe in between each line so i didn't pass out And now that I'm done with my lines, we're going to be going in with a dotting tool. This is from Profiles Backstage. It's the same one that I've been using throughout the nail art design. And I'm just going to be connecting every single line that connects. We're going to be doing a dot in between. And I'm making sure that I'm making it big enough so that you can see it on all sides of those lines. And then we're going to be curing that in the light. And I'm going to be going in every single little square with a dot as well in the color pumpkin. And again, remember to cure that in the light so that you do not smudge anything. Now for the ring finger, we're going to be doing another type of just random nail art that I feel goes with the vibe. So we're going to be starting off again with that teal color, doing four lines that kind of connect in a cross. And then we're going to be doing dark blue little details around those petals. And then we're going to be doing white the pumpkin color and some more teal and I'll let you guys kind of just watch this process since I've been talking pretty much the entire time and I feel like you guys kind of get the gist of exactly what I'm doing when you guys are watching me do it.
And of course, we're just adding some more details using my dotting tool. This is a really good way to kind of incorporate that type of style in without struggling a lot. Dotting tools are very easy to use. So I really, really like that as well. And I figured it would kind of go with the vibe. And of course, we're skipping the pinky because I did the exact same design that I did on my thumb. So now we're just going in with our top coat. I'm using Glossit from Not Polish. Again, I'm using Glossit, you guys. Be proud of me. But for the Talavera inspired nail art, I just had to go in with Glossy because that is pretty much what you get when you encounter any one of these inspired pieces. So I figured I would just go in with the Glossy top coat. We are lathering that on there to make sure you get into all of those creases, crevices, and little divots that the nail art paint creates. And then we're going to be curing that in the light for a full 60 seconds. I prefer to do the 90 second option just to make sure that everything is fully cured. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy Mexico Independence Month to everyone. I'll see you guys next time.